Why won't a girl come back even when she wants to? Why won't she give you a second chance even when she likes you? On this video, we're gonna give you the number one reason, what's really holding her back, and then we're gonna give you five ways to change her mind. Hi, I'm Bobby Rio. I'm here with Calvin Jameson. And maybe you've been in the situation where there's a woman, maybe it's an ex-girlfriend, maybe it's a woman you went on a few dates with and she ended things. She told you that she just wants to be friends or she's not feeling it, but you had such a good connection that she hasn't disappeared from your life. In fact, she still calls you. She still wants to hang out, but something is preventing her from letting you take it back to that level that you wanted it to be at. So what do you do? I brought Calvin on because he's recently been doing a lot of coaching sessions with clients going through this exact situation and he's stumbled on to some really good advice he's been passing along with them not only explaining to them what it is that their number one roadblock to getting her back is but also giving them practical things that you can use they can use immediately after watching this video these are the kind of tips we're going to be sharing with you so first off Calvin tell us a little bit about the situation some of your clients have been going through and then maybe Maybe I know there's that one piece of advice that really resonates with a lot of guys. Yeah, look, a lot of the guys I coach, they're trying to get their ex back and it's frustrating for them because they can even get back to hanging out with their ex, but can't cross the line back into having sex, kissing, being the top priority in her life. Now, what makes this confusing a lot of times mm -hmm. is that the girl will say things like, I still have feelings for you. I really like you. You're my favorite person. I think the world of you. I can't imagine my life without you. And so the guy gets confused and thinks, why will she not just take me back and give me a second chance when she clearly likes me, trust me, enjoys me, even says I'm her favorite person. And I found a way to explain it that's really been resonating with guys lately. And here's how I've been explaining it. Women were seeking you out because they thought you were a beacon of confidence, this beacon of rock solid masculinity, this beacon of autonomy. And when she pulled away, how did you act during the breakup? If you chased her, if you got needy, if you started acting like you couldn't live without her and crumbled, if you tried to suffer Replicate and suck up to her to get her back. If you let her start bullying you, guess what, my friends? You have now erased her idea of you as having the main trait she wanted. Sure, she still enjoys chatting with you. She still enjoys the old inside jokes. She still trusts you to keep a secret, but she wants to go date a guy who has that masculinity and that autonomy. And therein lies the problem. You can't focus on trying to get her back yet. First, you have to build yourself up in her eyes again to convince her through seeing it that you are a real man. You are autonomous, confident, and fully formed as a masculine man. Yeah, it really comes down to one word and that word is respect because when you're going through a situation with a woman right if she lost interest in you it's because something was off and a lot of times the girl doesn't really know what's going on she's mm -hmm. feeling that oh, I'm just not sure about this guy or a lot of times it's he already is thinking that we're at this level and looking at me like he's ready to take the next step but I'm still in that getting to know him phase she pulls back and the guy as we've all been there personally ourselves and also you and I have both done tons of sessions with clients going through this where the guy then just turns into a complete a wreck, just begging her back, confessing his feelings, buying her gifts. And like you said, in that moment, all that respect she had for him just starts disappearing. But she still thinks the guy's cool. She still right. likes you. She still, so she wants to hang out with you. She doesn't want you disappearing from her life, which is good. When you still have a woman and you have proximity to her, you you can turn things around. But what most guys miss, and, and what Calvin was alluding to with his client, is that you can't turn things around until you regain that respect. Because right now, you're at negative respect. Right now, if, if that's like, ground level, you're in the well, trying to claw your way back to the top of the well. And you're never gonna create attraction or make her want to see you again when she's looking down the well at you climbing back up. So what we wanna talk about and what Calvin's gonna walk you through and I'm gonna walk you through is five ways to regain that respect. So why don't we, you alluded to one of the things that happen when a woman is losing respect to you and that's a woman bullying you. Yeah. So why don't you tell them about tip number one that you can do when you're in this situation? Tip number one to regain her respect is show your sword without using it. 
okay? That means you're gonna start standing up for yourself when she starts picking every little thing apart. Now, there's a reason she's gonna start picking every little thing apart. The reason is she actually resents you for not being the guy that she imagined you were. She's mad because she imagined you were this beacon of masculinity, just overflowing with confidence. And the second that you crumbled, now she sees you as a disappointment. So she's going to start bullying you. That's when you need to start showing your sword. Now, we say without using it because you never want to actually get mad. Obviously, you don't want to hurt anybody and you don't even want to blow your temper, right? Because if you get too emotional, that shows that she can still emotionally control you and that still shows that you're weak. So what we want you to do is start standing up for yourself and setting some boundaries in your life without getting mad, but by being quite firm and being ready to pull back and take yourself away when she's being that way. Yeah, definitely. And I want to add in as a sort of, I don't want to say a bonus, but you also, we also get a lot of guys, married guys mm. who face this where their wife, they haven't left them, but their wife, maybe you're in it, maybe a long-term girlfriend or a wife has lost respect for you. Yeah. You're still with her, but she doesn't see you as a man. She doesn't want to sleep with you anymore. And she picks on you, right? We even see that in sitcoms where the mm -hmm. wife is like making jokes about the husband, mm -hmm. like he's below her. And a lot of husbands wind up in this situation. And this technique that Calvin is talking about, showing your sword, what do a lot of guys do? They mess up, they get it angry, telling your ex-girlfriend like, you know what, screw you, I'm over you. Again, what Calvin said, that's, she knows she has control. When she can get you angry, she can get you upset, it's control, which means you're still in the well. Mm -hmm. It's showing her like, listen, I'm not gonna take your shit, but I'm also not angry about it. Like it's just, I'm, I'm, I've moved on with my life. So uh, Calvin, you're, one of your clients went through something very similar recently. Why don't you give them a, a you know a real world example of what we mean by showing your sword without using it? Definitely. A guy I'm coaching right now is trying to get his ex-girlfriend back. They've been hanging out a bit. And he wrote to me saying he was in a bit of a predicament. He felt like she was treating him as a last priority. They had talked one day about getting together Saturday night, but it was Thursday when they talked and she said she'd confirm. Then she let Thursday night pass, all day Friday pass, and it was now Friday at 9 p.m. He still hadn't heard back from her. So he wrote to me and said, what's going on here? And I said, dude, she's treating you like a standby guy. Her respect for you has lowered so much that now she thinks that you're just gonna wait around while she judges what other options she has for doing something on Saturday, and she thinks she can get back to you at the last minute and you're just gonna jump because you got nothing better to do. That's a sign of lack of respect. And I said, what you need to do right now is take the offer off the table. You're not gonna be anybody's standby guy. So I wrote him this text and I told him to send it. Hey, didn't hear back so I assumed tonight didn't work and I made other plans. But I'll reach out next week and see how things look. Soon as he sent that text, she instantly wrote back and apologized and asked to reschedule. But that was only possible because he had taken the offer off the table. When we say show your sword without using it, that's a great example because he didn't say, hey, uh, never call me again or you're not respecting me. He just simply said, I made other plans. And he took the offer away, but he didn't get angry. He even said, I'll reach out next week and maybe see if, if something, if your schedule opens up, but he took the offer off the table. I have a, a, a situation in my own life uh, years ago where I had been with this girl from my social circle. We had this little thing. I was still into her, but we were now in the friend zone. And she was getting to the point where we had this connection. It was real, but I noticed that little by little, she was like treating me like I was her bratty little brother. Where I was like, everything I was doing was annoying her. And there was this one point I, I can remember it vividly where we all went on this uh, trip together to Mexico, a bunch of us from our social circle, and a spot opened up for a plane ride that was gonna be earlier. And I remember her going, we gotta go on the plane ride. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but we came with our friends. Let's just all go home together, right? She started getting more and more angry. Like, you're like obsessed with your friends. Like, why do you, you can't do anything without them? And the old me, right, might've been like, oh, you're right. I, and I would've tried to impress her and show right. her that. And I looked at her, I go, you know what? I'm staying, I came with my friends. I'm going with my friends. But listen, if you wanna leave with them, that's totally fine with me. There's, you can go take one of the open seats on the earlier plane. And then I just walked forward and caught up with my friends and she pouted for a little bit and I saw her, I was like, and all of a sudden she comes up closer to me, walks, and then she starts doing that nudge, that like apology nudge, I'm sorry. And sure enough, it was like the first step towards getting that respect back. Now, was that the instant cure-all? No, but did that lead somewhere? Yes, because 
you have to get that respect back. And one of the ways you get it is by not allowing a woman to treat you like you're her bat bratty little brother. So give me a, another example of if you've seen this play out. Oh, sure. I, I was coaching a guy just a couple of weeks ago and he was on a date with a girl he was trying to get back and she was apparently treating him really bad. He took her to this kind of salsa bar and she was like, oh, I don't like salsa. Oh, this place is so crowded. Why did you bring me here? And so he sat her down and got her like a regular seat and she goes, apparently, Ooh, if you had bought a bottle, we could have got one of the good tables, right? She was just picking apart everything he was doing that night. So he actually went into the restroom and texted me. And I texted him back, and here's what I told him to do. I had him go back to the table and say, you know what? I'm in the mood to have fun tonight, and it doesn't seem like you are. Let me go ahead and call an Uber to take you home. And she looked at him and said, huh, you're not serious. You're not going to call an Uber and send me home. And he goes, yeah, I am, because you're clearly not out to have fun tonight, and I am. I'd like to go find some friends to meet up with who want to have fun like me. So he starts calling the Uber. She starts dissing him, arguing, all the way up until the moment the Uber comes, and with some cajoling and nudging, nothing too harsh, mm. he tells her, listen, you gotta get in this Uber because I'm gonna go here and I don't wanna hang out with you anymore. So this is a great way for you to get home safe. She gets in the Uber and he went out and he made the most of his night. Now, it didn't pay off initially in the way that you might have hoped, right? Obviously, you're gonna hope that she changes her behavior. She didn't, but she saw that he wasn't gonna flinch. She was really gonna follow through with it. The next day, she sent him this long apology text saying, I'm so sorry for the way I acted last night. I'd had a bad day at work. I had a headache. Please forgive me. I won't act like that again. The rest is history. Yeah, he showed me that text and it's exactly what you want. His client wasn't mean. He even said to her, hey, we'll hang out another night. Tonight doesn't seem like a good night. And that's what really showing your sword is about. It's about just not accepting when a woman is not giving you the level of respect that you would want from somebody, right? Yeah. Just because she's your ex or just because she, you, you think she's attractive and you want another chance with her doesn't mean you should allow her to treat you the way somebody else in your life you would never tolerate that sort of no. behavior from. Now, the next thing that we want to uh, discuss, and this is some thing that man oh man I'd say at least half the clients that come to me and I'm sure you're you're in the same boat are dealing with and this is the idea of you have to be comfortable in the gray zone what does that mean what does the gray zone mean the gray zone is uncertainty the gray zone is when you're not sure wait a minute she likes me a little bit but she doesn't like me and she's sending me all these mixed signals and I need to know what's going on I need to figure this out we also call it emotional quick sand. It's when a girl has you so messed up in the head that you're just not able to act right and you treat. We, we both deal with clients like mm -hmm. this. I know it. It's like you have this mentality that every move you make is life or death in the sense of, oh my God, if I don't answer this text right now, I may never have another chance to hear from her in my entire life. I've been there. I, I can remember a girl where I was like, she had been blowing me off and I told myself, next time she texts me, I'm going to give her a dose of her own medicine mm -hmm. and I'm not going to respond. And then bzz, my phone buzzed and I see oh, her name. I'm so excited. And I go, don't don't reply, don't reply, don't reply. And I think I lasted like seven minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, if I don't reply, she might think that I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm thumbing in a message, right? Because we're not comfortable with that tension of you have to get comfortable in the gray area because here's something that you're gonna learn in life and especially in dating, the game is won in the gray area. Though the person who is most comfortable with uncertainty wins in life, not just in dating, they win in life because that's where the game is won. It's won when the result is not guaranteed, but you can handle the tension, then that's how you win the game, so. Yeah, yeah. With that said, you should be comfortable creating the gray area as well. For example, let's say you're texting with a girl you like and you're about to go into a movie. Don't send her that text that's gonna prevent the gray area. Don't send her that text that says, hey, going into a movie so I won't be able to text for a couple of hours. Instead, turn off your phone, go into that movie. Let her wonder about you for a couple of hours. Let her think, is he on a date with another girl? Did he lose interest in me? Is he mad at me? Did he lose his phone? Is he okay? Did he get in a car wreck? Is he just at a movie with friends? All these things going through her mind is gonna make you 100% more interesting to her the entire time that she's wondering. And then, 
when you end up writing her three hours later, she's going to be more excited and happy to get your message. 100%. Learning how to take advantage of the gray areas is a huge part of what we teach in the Scrambler itself. It's all about using the gray area. It's one of the steps of, of creating this in her and building that tension. But from this perspective that we're talking about here, it's also a matter of one of the mistakes I know we, we talk about, Calvin and I, we, we jump on um, uh, Slack all the time and go over our various clients and what, what's going mm -hmm. on. And we both mm -hmm. face this. One of the other mistakes is when guys are in this gray area, they want to talk about things, right? The girl, it's an ex-girlfriend or the girl pulled away and they hang out with her and they know I shouldn't bring it up. But some point in the conversation, they go, so, what, so what's going on? So have you changed your mind or what? You, and they want to talk about, like they want to relive the past and talk about what happened. And that's all you needing that that clarity, that certainty, but the more she senses that you need that, mm -hmm. the less respect she has for you. The person who's comfortable with the gray area in life is really the most attractive. That's a charismatic person, yeah. right? That when you're looking at just because the the Super Bowl is coming up and you think of the greatest quarterbacks, mm -hmm. it's the quarterback where Tom Brady, right? Patrick Mahomes, there's a minute left in the game and he's down by seven points and it doesn't rattle him. He's comfortable with it. He's still going to act the same way that he would have acted if they were up by 27 points. He's comfortable there. Whereas a lot of people choke in those situations and choking in those situations with a woman means going, oh no, I'm down a few points. I've got to make that up. And you wind up making every wrong. We talked about it earlier, sending the flowers, all that stuff is your inability to be comfortable in that gray area. It also plays out in person when you're talking to her and. Oh yeah, absolutely. It happens even on a moment to moment basis, the gray area happens any time that there becomes that awkward silence in the conversation where, you know, the conversation kind of dies out. You got nothing to say. She's got nothing to say. If you're uncomfortable with the gray area, you're going to be the one who forces the next conversation topic and she's going to lose respect for you even more because she's going to think, yeah, this guy does want to keep me entertained. You're going to go, have you been over to West Campus lately? And you're going to come up with some stupid thing to say just because you don't want the gray area. Here's the better tactic. You know what? Own the gray area. Be at home in the gray area, mm. right? Relax in the gray area. Instead, let that conversation die out and then just be comfortable with your own thoughts. Yeah, no, 100%. And the last thing I want to say about this, and, and, and this kind of stems from something you just said it, as being in person, and it also stems back to not talking about it, because this is something I see happen too, where a client is hanging out with an ex-girlfriend. Yep. He lets the silence happen. Yeah. And then there's this moment between them. Maybe she grabs his hand for a second. And now some sexual tension is back. He's yeah. on the back track. Oh, yeah. And what happens later on, he goes, so will you grab my hand? What was it? He wants to talk about it. It's, no, that's what yeah. she likes. Yeah. That uncertainty is attractive. That's what the sexual tension is. That little handhold, that prolonged eye contact and not having to define it is actually attractive because that's the courtship, right? That's the slow arousal that that's happening and to get back with a woman or to regain her respect that's part of it now the next um, tip that we want to give you and this kind of stems from this idea of being comfortable in the gray area and that is be able to say no without an explanation right and you recently went through this um, with a client as well oh yeah absolutely so listen one thing i teach my clients is when you're trying to get back with an ex don't accept a downgrade. This client of mine, obviously he used to be dating this girl, going out to dinners, spending the night at each other's houses. He reached out to try to hang out with her and she actually said yes, because I'd been writing some pretty flirty and good texts for him. But she goes, yeah, why don't we meet for lunch tomorrow at 1230 and she proposed some brightly lit family friendly restaurant, right? Now he thought that was the win of the century. He was like, oh, so I should just write her back yes, right? And I said, no, you're not gonna write her back yes. Is that what you want to be her lunch buddy? Is that what you want to use your chance at seeing her again at? to get in on her lunch break where she's probably gotta be back at work in an hour anyway and it can't lead to anything? No, you're not gonna accept that downgrade. So what I had him write to her was, I'm slammed all day tomorrow, but I'm gonna be out tomorrow night. Meet me at Moxie Bar, 7 p.m. Now, was he taking a risk that maybe he'd get a no to that? Sure, 
but he was only letting go of a crappy plan. That lunch wasn't gonna lead to anything. As it happens, the girl actually wrote back and said, okay, sounds good. And they ended up having a great date and even hooked up that night. Yeah, you have to be willing to say no. If it's something that is A, something you don't wanna do, right? Maybe it's a, a girl you're now in the friend zone with and she's, ooh, maybe she, a lot of times, like we've, I've even seen it where the girl's dating somebody new. Oh yeah? Yeah, she's, hey, can you come over and help me move this, my couch? And you're like, <laughs> Oh yeah, just be like, not uh, sorry, I already have plans. You don't. And when we say don't explain yourself, it means don't say, hey, I really want to, maybe another day, but today I have plans with my friend Eddie. He's in town. Mm. I haven't seen him in a while. It's like mm. you have to like mm. exp just go, hey, have plans, can't help. Another client of mine, this guy Steve, I remember this uh, situation where he had this sort of ex that he wanted back that he was still in contact with and he was going to this really exclusive charity event in new york city and he was talking to this new girl and he invited this new girl to the charity event and then the ex was like she knew about this she had gone with him previously so she reached out to him and she was like hey are you going to i forget the name of the event are you going to the event this year and he wrote back yeah i'm going and she wrote back hey you have an extra ticket hey like basically can i come because she expected him yeah. she knew she had the power over him she was expecting him to say yes and Steve immediately called me and I and I answered the phone I'm like Steve why are you calling me and he's I have to know this answer right now he's like, I'm like what is she wants to come to the charity event so of course Steve wants to go to the charity event with right. this woman it's a black tie affair it could be romantic he's imagining that this is the night he's going to rekindle things he calls me up and I'm and I'm telling him Steve you, you already have plans if you cancel with this other woman to go with you, your ex is going to feel that energy women just have this intuition to know no, they have that control. I'm like, second off, your ex is not, she's been there. She's not, this new girl seems really cool, right? Why would you turn down this new girl? So then his next question is like, should I tell her that I can't get an extra ticket and that it's, I go, no, just write, hey, sorry, can't this year. And he said, really, don't explain to her why? I go, no, she's not your girlfriend. You don't need to explain why you can't go to her. Just write, sorry, can't this year. And he wrote it and months later, I think she, she contacted him, but that's not really the point of it. Right. The point is that you have to get comfortable saying no to a woman if she's not your girlfriend because that's a sign that remember it's like how much power does she have is she looking down does she know she can get anything she wants out of you and when she knows that you're never gonna get her back no matter how much she might imagine you being the term a lot of guy women uses you're perfect on paper but mm. i just don't feel it and the reality is she doesn't feel it because she doesn't respect you that's in that right. masculine way yeah. that you explained yeah. earlier why don't you lead into the next the next tip that we want to share with the guys so the fourth way to build back respect is ration your attention. If a girl is not your girlfriend anymore, she cannot be getting unlimited access to your attention, okay? If she does, it's one reason why she doesn't respect you because she knows she's not giving you her attention. It ain't reciprocal. So she knows she's just taking and getting away with it while you give and give. This actually came up recently with a client I'm working with. He threw a party and he was excited because his ex-girlfriend was gonna be there. And I said to him, okay, here's the plan. When she arrives, you go and greet her one time and warmly, casually say, hey, Rebecca, glad you could make it. Huh? Make yourself at home and then make eye contact with a friend, go talk to a buddy, and then be very mindful for the whole party. Make sure there's never a moment where you're standing doing nothing. Be always walking from person to person. She'll be watching you, buddy. She'll see you, and I want her to always see you with a drink in your hand, chatting, entertaining different groups, maybe playing your piano, maybe ushering people into different rooms of the party. Let her see you having a great time. Now, if you happen to bump into each other across paths in a hallway, then I want you to say, oh, Rebecca, having a good time? Good, hey, don't get in too much trouble. And then walk off and find another friend to go talk to. And let that be the bare minimum of attention that you give her. Why? Because she's gonna be expecting the opposite. She's gonna be expecting that the second she walks in, you're gonna be glued to her. She's probably imagining that she's gonna have to excuse herself to get away from you. And when you don't give her that level of attention, she's gonna feel a disappointment. But out of that disappointment is going to grow more more respect 
for you. Yeah, and I wanna give guys a quick warning because I've been guilty of this. When a girl that we like is at a party and we're not talking to her, be aware that she's got one corner of her eye always paying attention to you. So you don't wanna be always like, you can see the body language of, oh, where is she? And there's gonna be that moment you don't see her and you think, oh, she might have left. And you're gonna be like, and she's gonna see you looking for her and everything you've done all night will disappear and you'll be back in that digging your way out of emotional yeah. quicksand. Yeah. How else can you ration your attention with a woman? So there's a couple other things I tell guys to do. One of the things that I tell guys to do is if you're always a female friend, and this is a great bonus, if it is a total friend zone situation, pulling your attention back from a female friend in the mm -hmm. way that you told your client to do to his ex mm -hmm. is amazing because she's gonna be used to you at the party giving her you all your attention. Another thing that you can do, let's say a female friend, and, when, and let's say you guys always hang out, maybe you go out to dinner or you hang out, she's probably used to getting your full undivided attention and because you like her, that's probably what you do. But you know what, maybe one night you happen to be distracted by your phone. You're getting text or you're just like a little less engaged with her. Now, again, everything that we tell you to do is a lot better if it's actually not a tactic and you are just getting a ton of texts. But my point is that a lot of times when we really are interested in a woman and we want her back, we just go, I have to give her all my attention, which actually backfires. So if you can find ways to pull your attention and place it in other places, whether it's just, oh, sorry, the the basketball game is, is on tonight. It's And I, I just been checking the scores, right? Like basketball, he's checking. He never used mm -hmm. to check the basketball mm -hmm. score when we were together, right? Yep. It's a difference. That difference is like, wow, he's that puppy dog that used to give me all his attention is finding new toys to play with, yeah. right? Another thing, this situation is really powerful in work because a lot of the clients, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of clients where the, the woman that, that they were interested in, they work with. Don't so worry. one of the things they say is, what happens at work? And I go, well, she's probably used to you coming over to her desk and making conversation. I go, I'm not telling you to flat out ignore her, similar to your advice at the party. It's right. over to her desk. Right. Hey, how's it going? And then go talk to everybody else. She's just another girl in your office. She's not, this isn't the office with Jim and Pam, if you know that thing where it's like every chance you get, you're up there talking to her. That's not what it's gotta be anymore. That's what she's used to probably. Now it's you're, you're doing your thing, right? You're not giving her that attention. It also, social media, explain this, because I know you probably, oh, you were yeah. telling me one of your clients messed up big time because of this. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Listen, guys, social media, that's a real thing. If you're looking at somebody's Instagram stories or Facebook stories, they can tell who's looking. Right, and if they know that they're in a gray area, you might want out of the friend zone, you might want to get back, they're gonna be looking to see if you in particular are looking at their stuff. And I'll tell you what, I was working with a guy recently, we were doing all this great work, and his ex wasn't really getting reattracted like I knew she should be. And finally one day I said, are you by chance looking at her Instagram stories? And he goes, every day. And I go, yeah, thanks for telling me, buddy. Jeez, you're totally sabotaging the entire strategy because as I'm trying to make you look a bit more mysterious, more into other things, take your attention away, here you are giving her 100% of your attention every time she posts a story, she sees you're one of the very first to look at it, right? And that just undercuts all the rest. She can keep on disrespecting you because she knows she still owns your attention. So the final piece of advice that we want to give you in this realm and this kind of place. So I mentioned a little earlier that it feels very gamey if you're purposely like, oh, I'm not going to call her back tonight. In order to not make it gamey, you actually want to expand your social circle. You want to go out there and yeah. rebuild because a lot of times when you get wrapped up in a woman, you let a lot of other areas of your life dissipate, yeah. right? You yeah. stop hanging out with your friends. Maybe there was sports that you were involved in, activities or clubs that you joined. And all of a sudden, because you're so wrapped up in a girl, you let these things die out. And that makes it that much harder to not give her attention because you don't really have other things in your life going on to take that attention. It makes it that much harder to say no because, hey, what else am I doing? I may as well hang out with her. I've got nothing else. But yeah. saying no to a woman, not giving her your attention, being comfortable in the gray area, all of these things are a lot easier the more things you have going on in your life. And as a bonus, as I'll explain in a second, but I want to let you give a, because you did an amazing, we have another video on this channel where I talked to Calvin, it was a case study because there was this girl who had 
given one of your clients the, yep. we need space. Yep. They, they were together, yep. we need space. The client was an emotional quicksand and you wound up turning the entire thing around. Yeah. And, and if you wanna watch that video, it's on the channel. I'll put a link to it below so you can find it. You, you literally wrote word for word yep. everything this client did. It's a great video to watch if you're in this situation. But one of the first things you talk about in that video was the idea of you had him rebuilding some of his social circle. Yeah, I had him rebuilding his social circle, exactly. I said to him, man, when you see her from time to time, you need to be able to be talking about social things that you're doing. You can't only be talking about work and watching TV at home on the couch. So with that particular guy, I dug deep. I found out that I believe he had a, a membership to a country club but never went. I told him, start going. Start participating in some of these things, like tournaments that they were having, poker games that they were having. Turns out he was about to go on a trip to Vegas just for business. I told him, call some friends, try to make it a social trip. Then you can talk to her about your fun trip to Vegas. These things really work, right? Especially if you can get yourself around mutual friends. Let mutual friends that you and she have see you and your mutual friends having fun, that you're not asking about your ex. She'll hear about it and she will respond respect you more knowing that you're out there having fun with the shared social circle, not asking about her. And another thing, guys, build up your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram. I can't tell you how many guys come to us and they say, oh, I'm just not that into social media, right? Maybe you're also just not that into getting your ex-girlfriend back because social media is too good of a tool not to use. Yeah. You get to show yourself. Make sure that you do show yourself. Going out to eat with friends, going for drinks with friends, doing some outdoor activities with friends. Who knows? Maybe you start going hiking. Maybe you start going canoeing. Maybe you join a softball league and you start playing with some cool guys and girls. Whatever the case, don't make the mistake of putting your arm around a sexy chick like she's your new girlfriend. That's gonna look staged and forced. But maybe you take a group picture with the new hiking group that you're in and there happens to be a pretty girl in the group. Now your ex is gonna see that and get scared because that looks like you're authentically starting to slip towards other options. Exactly, and it's a situation that makes it easy to say no because using the hiking example, which mm. I actually had a client in, in that situation, he joined hiking and his ex used to, she was pulling away, uh, very similar to what we're talking about, still keeping him in her life, but not willing to, to get back to that romantic level. But they would very often meet and hang out and Saturdays would come around and she'd be, she was used to him going, oh yeah, sure. Then he got into this hiking group and she started getting very jealous. She started probing. Who do you talk to there? Who, is there girls there? And he said, oh yeah, there's a girl Michelle there, but no, she's cool. But And you're very, you, you don't try to make her jealous. Women know when you're trying, but just by being autonomous and being like wanting these other things in your life, whether it's you're a client going to the country club, mm -hmm. it's like you're choosing something over her, which is shocking to her if she's not used to it. And it's very powerful in getting her to go, okay, that respect is coming back. Again, everything in this video that Calvin and I uh, just covered is all about getting the respect back because respect is the number one step to then get attraction back, to then get her going, mm -hmm. I do want to date this guy again. But it all starts with getting that respect back. Now, why don't you give a quick rundown, a review for the guys of the five steps real fast. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, remember, if your ex really does still like you, but she won't get back together with you, it's because she lost respect for you. And a woman is not going to date a guy she doesn't respect. So to build that respect back, you've got to number one, show your sword, but not use it. Number two, be comfortable in the gray area. Number three, say no without giving a long explanation. Number four, ration your attention. And number five, build up your social proof, your social circle. I know a lot of people watching this, every time I bring Calvin on, guys always say to me, hey, this Calvin guy seems to be helping guys out. How can I learn more about him? I'm gonna put a link below this video mm. where you can learn about Calvin's coaching and what it entails. As a, Calvin just, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, he's been one of uh, one of our top coaches for the past year two years actually now just getting amazing 
results for clients. Why don't you, a lot of guys might not be familiar what a dating, how, how, what it actually does, how do you work with these guys? So why don't you give them a quick idea of if somebody was interested in working you, what does it actually entail? First thing I do is I chat up with you about what's your life like? Who's the girl you really want? Who are the other girls who might be options in your life? What makes you tick? And once I find everything else about a guy, then I start telling him a game plan. And that might involve prescribing exact pictures he needs for his social media. It usually involves me writing exact scripts on what to say to the girl he likes exactly the next time he runs into her. And usually if he has a chance to see her, I can usually build up attraction pretty well through writing him scripts on exactly how to flirt. I've seen his scripts he writes, guys, and it's a thing of genius. Like <laughs> he predicts what the girl's gonna say and he gives them, if she says this, you say this. If she says this, you say that instead. It's really, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah, no. it, it's next level ninja stuff that, that, that you do with these guys. <laughs> Thanks, man. I try to be a social ninja there. And so then also I'll do that with your text. When it's time to start texting her, I will listen to you give me all the raw information about her life and your life. And then I'll write it into some kind of fun, flirtatious text that will spark her interest again. And then probably my favorite thing to do is get a guy ready for a date. I will often Google your city and pick out exactly the place you should take her, maybe a couple of places back to back. And then I will teach you exactly what to do and when to do it and how to do it on that day to have the best chance of hooking up with her again, and hopefully moving things forward towards fully getting back together. Awesome, and as I can attest, like I, tons of guys writing me saying, hey, one guy got recently, King Calvin, right? Like he, you've gotten <laughs> this guy, and a lot of, it's, it's just insane the results that you guys are getting for these clients. I'm, I'm really excited to see it. So again, the link below, if you're interested in that, you can learn a little bit more about the packages Calvin offers. And as always, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe to the channel, because uh, Calvin and I actually have a few more that are gonna coming out that I think you're gonna love. And also leave us a comment. Let us know what topic you'd like to see us really dig into in the next video so that we can really tailor it to what you actually want. So leave that comment below, hit like, and make sure you subscribe. Thanks, Calvin.